What if somebody called out of the blue one day to ask if you'd like to fly Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis, or play B.B. King's Lucille, or use George Martin's headphones? You'd do that, right? Such a call came to me back in March when R.M. Sotheby's asked if I would like to drive Dr. Ferdinand Porsche's 1939 Type 64 Berlin Rome Rennwagen, the first car to be called Porsche. Well, here it is. The 1939 Porsche Type 64, built as a demonstration of Nazi technical superiority. You would have to go many decades to find a car as aerodynamically evolved as this car was in 1939. On August 17th, during Monterey's historic Car Week, R.M. Sotheby's will open bidding on this authentic museum piece, a central artifact in the age of automobiles. We are here in Los Angeles with what is legitimately the world's first Porsche. Why isn't this car in a museum? It left Porsche's hands, the family's hands, you know, in the late 40s. But it's been lovingly cared for by you know, four owners since then. Should the car be in a museum? Absolutely. Is it one of the most important artifacts of Porsche's history? Absolutely. May I? Absolutely, go for it. This radically aerodynamic version of a Volkswagen KDF Beetle was built to compete in the Nazi-sponsored Berlin-Rome road race, but the war broke out first. And Dr. Porsche was Hitler's car guy, make no mistake. The Berlin-Rome road race was a promotion for the Autobahn and the newly minted Axis alliance with Italy. But from a design perspective, the car was the first casting of a shape that would be immortalized, first in Porsche's 356 models onto even today's 911s. You can still see the 356 in it. Yeah, you can yeah. see the evolution in how the 356 body was, was sculpted from it. How is it that we're so lucky to have this unrestored example? It's four loving caretakers its whole life understood what it was, mm -hmm. and they understood the importance of keeping it as original as possible. Do we know what, uh, what the top speed of this thing is? We can try to find out. I'm all for that. The car was transported to an undisclosed location. Well, obviously somewhere in Long Beach. And after a bit of priming, the dual Solex carbs started up Sounding very much like an old VW. It's an inestimably valuable museum piece, so I'm driving it very gingerly. It has uh, four proper gears, too. God dang. I can't believe I'm in this car. Top speed? During the war, Dr. Porsche made the trip from Berlin to Wolfsburg, about 140 miles, averaging 83 miles per hour, which would be fast even today. In some ways it drives like an old, decrepit Volkswagen, and yet it does not feel fragile at all. I think the biggest surprise is that it feels still pretty robust. Also, the elegance of the interior design and packaging. Would you look at the curvature of the dash and the geometry of the floorboards and the low threshold and everything that works so well in this car set the template for decades of sports car mastery by Porsche. It's a strange visitor from another time, isn't it? Absolutely. You look at this car coming at you from a distance, it looks like a space shuttle. It looks like a UFO coming at you. And like a UFO, the sight won't last long. So look quick, 